In summer of 2021, Netflix released He's All That, a teen romantic comedy starring world famous social media star Addison Rae, which takes the 1999 classic movie She's All That and updates it to be more commercial and soulless, like one of those TikToks that shows you 10 things to buy at Target. I promise you, I already have enough processed food and ocean bound plastic inside my body at this moment to last me a lifetime. And before anyone asks, yes, I've had a two liter Sprite bottle lost inside me since 2013. What? Today we're diving into this very, very highly requested film that helped a TikToker finally break out of the 30 second vertical video format that made her rich and famous and into a formulaic, cheaply written film that made me depressed and jaded. We'll be analyzing He's All That and the room temperature chemistry between our lead actors, its inherently flawed mystery ending, and the super obvious product placement that would would feel like satire if I didn't go and purchase all of those things shortly after my first viewing. And if those secret ads worked on me, then kids don't stand a chance. I have a bachelor's degree. It's a whole mess on today's Bet On It installment of Clip Breakdown. <laughs> Hello, television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our most favorite and highly requested movies and other content on the web, and we break them down like a high schooler whose personality we want to change so that we can look at each individual flaw and blemish and look at it and say, this is a reason to cancel my Netflix subscription. <laughs> I'm so happy to be back in my home studio under the bright warm glow of these ringy lights. And everyone on Twitter who talked to me wanted me to do this movie. But before we get into it, give this video a big thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe for two new videos every week. And I've got merch and a Patreon where you can access bonus content and exclusive watch parties. Also, quick note to Miramax and Netflix, this video is protected by fair, fair use, use because it's commentary and criticism. So don't go claiming copyright on this video because I swear I will come for you. I've got lawyers who can help me now. I promise you, just don't do it. Also, before we start, I should just step up front of you and admit, I've never seen the 99 version of She's All That with Rachel Lee Cook, who is obviously the icon and star of Josie and the Pussycats, in what I'm pretty sure was her breakout role. So, I don't know every reference from the original movie that made it into this remake, but I can appreciate some of them, and I love that Rachel Lee is in this, as is Matthew Lillard from the original. What we don't have is a character character that I'm interested in seeing from like the beginning. Ugh. Good morning guys, it's me, Paget Head to Toe here. I would be in those comments at 5 a.m. with my caps lock on, like, girl, you did not just wake up wearing liquid highlighter, please. Also, if your subconscious is not already browsing Sephora.com at this point, then no offense, but your subconscious is sort of an idiot. I, for one, am impressed that they managed to feature no less than six beauty brands within the first story beat, because it shows that the filmmakers have given equal attention to both the narrative and ensuring that drunk elephant skincare has brand awareness with Gen Z as they start earning those post-college salaries. Right from this little setup, we get that supposedly our main character, Paget is kind of shallow. You know, she had to put on makeup and then get back on camera and pretend like she had woke up like this. We talk about makeovers, self-improvement, and how to become the most spectacular you. I don't need any advice on how to make a spectacle of myself, okay? I just pretend to faint while waiting in line at the bank. Oh, you just wanted to wire that paycheck to your grandmother without any drama? Well, too bad, because I need either good or bad attention right now. As you can probably tell, I don't have any issues that a teenager would be capable of fixing. We're only a minute in, and I already know I pulled too many clips from this video. Like, I had something to say about almost every little thing in this movie. I didn't get my full eight last night because I was up studying and, as some of you saw, baking some super delicious treats. Paget, sweetie, please tell me you haven't started doing cake sitting live streams before your college applications went out. The people on those admissions boards are like colonial Puritans when it comes to their students creating adult content. Well then why are the notebooks at the school store 25 bucks? 
Oh, I, uh, one nice thing is that the writer of the original She's All That is also the writer of this movie. I don't know what happened to this man's writing skills over the years. Maybe Netflix kind of dumbed down the script a little bit, but not the same. Like the, the first one must have been better than this. Andy Lala 09 wants to know how my morning routine is different after a late night. Well, step one is always to chisel the dried feces off my duvet cover and then make sure I can still find my phone and wallet. Oh, this advice is for teenagers. In that case, I splash my face with cold water and blast Watermelon Sugar by Harry Styles. I'm really gunning to get the cover of Seventeen magazine this year because I'm dying to share my favorite Pinkberry toppings. I already told you there's a lot of product placement in this movie, but I'm still gonna keep telling you because there's not a whole lot that there isn't products placed in and it's shocking. Like, we overdid it. These Bunny Venom Revival Eye Patches, some aloe head to toe glow oil to get rid of the dryness and add a whisper of cream blush. Be careful, Paget. They say if you whisper cream blush into the mirror five times, the founder of Ilia Beauty will appear and tell you all about their new super serum skin tint. I think it's very clever that after Addison's character plugs the eye gels from Bunny Venom, which is the name of her fictional sponsor in the movie, she then goes on to promote two very real beauty products that fit in so organically to the scene. Like, how much did Ilia Beauty have to pay to get their hashtag on the screen while she held up their product? But listen, it's not all about makeup. Makeup, okay? It's also about luxury toothpaste. Zoe World 88 says she has a giant zit. Take some soft toilet paper, a little toothpaste, dab it on, dries it right out. You guys, it's true. I tried out this hack and it really dried out my ass. I need the kids at home to not paper mache their faces with Colgate and toilet paper. You can tell this influencer character was written by a man when she gives a beauty tip that we've been hearing over and over again since 1970. They've created skincare products since then. R. Lee Fleming Jr. Has no one on TikTok heard of cortisone injections? As soon as Paget leaves her room, we get an idea that maybe her life is not as perfect as she presents online. <laughs> Another late night? Uh, seven to seven. Ugh, you know that awful feeling when you work an overnight 12 hour hospital shift and by the time you get home, your makeup is all perfect and your hair gets a little piecey? I did like the reveal of Paget leaving her aesthetic bedroom and coming out into what clearly seems like a smaller and more modest house than you might expect. But I guess showing a woman with realistic looking skin or eyes without mascara is a layer of subtlety that Netflix viewers just aren't ready for yet. I love films that are like actually going there with their makeup, like give me realism. I used to do no makeup looks a lot in movies as a makeup artist and I would always, you know, just do like full face of foundation and maybe some contour but no blue. But I feel like moving towards filmmakers who want to show realistic depictions of skin, like actually bare faces and, you know, no eyelashes, that would be cool. That's the, the move we're definitely seeing in advertising. So I wonder if that will carry over to the more traditionally glamorous world of film as well. It seems like Paget's mom, played by Rachel Lee Cook, works really hard in order to maintain this house in the school district that Paget attends. And Paget tries to work hard as well. She apparently earns money from her TikTok following. I've been waiting for this. Almost $3,000 for, um, tell me what you do again. I'm just mostly kidding. Really? Because it seems like you're just mostly jealous, mother. Sorry I get paid more to try out Korean face masks than you do to clean out people's folds, but you had all of nursing school to consider that and purchase a ring light of your own. Obviously just kidding. Shout out to healthcare workers of all types who help protect their communities and save lives. We couldn't do it without you. I know that this movie was shot in the dead of the pandemic, like right in the midst, to the point where the first time I heard about it was because the production had to shut down a COVID testing site in order to shoot for one day and everyone was like, okay, that's a little much. I mean, COVID site managed to do it. Apparently they had a price. Uh, this movie has a incredibly problematic habit of telling and not showing, which is like the number one sin in filmmaking. Yeah, I've been with the repairman. <laughs> Honey. I mean, you work so hard to keep us in this school district. Full of snotty entitled trust funders. And then you feel this tremendous pressure to keep up. Ooh, I see you're enjoying the new expositional blend of tea from Starbucks this morning. Is it true that it naturally supports saying things that are convenient for the audience? Also, what if Paget was like, does it make me sound like a snobby entitled trust funder? If I tell you that it's disgusting, you're sitting in our kitchen chair with the scrubs that you've been getting 
and piss on all night. Like, come on, mom, let me at least get you a Lysol wipe to sit on. My sister's a nurse and my mother is, is, has been a nurse my whole life and the first thing they would do when they get home is take a shower and, uh, you know, not sit around in disgusting 12 hour old blood covered scrubs. Next, we see Paget kind of go out of the back of her house and then to the front of a luxury apartment building where she is trying to deceive her friends into thinking she lives and presumably her followers as well. Paget also has a croque and co a croque and bouche, which is a fancy dessert made of like a tower of puff pastries that always looks delicious. Hers looks a little weird, covered in chocolate, but she's delivering it to her boyfriend. Jordan, shooting his big video today and I wanted to surprise him. It's a lot of pressure dealing with all this sudden fame. The guy's completely gorgeous with half a million followers. What does he have to be stressed out about? Wow, you kids sure provide a lot of extra context when you talk to each other. Does it take you like three hours to order a salad from Panera? I'm all already not enjoying this script because we've gotten so much information that could have been given to us visually. And I know for a fact that this is a movie and not an audiobook because otherwise this video would be sponsored by Audible. Wait, Daryl, is this video sponsored by Audible? Oh, I forgot. My intern Daryl escaped. Well, it's like I always say, if you can't take the verbal abuse, then don't even bother coming back, Daryl. There are far more cinematic ways that the movie could have chose to show us that Jordan, the boyfriend, had just risen to fame and was, you know, letting it go to his head. Like he could be streaming live from the movie set. He's like, I'm here on the movie set. So excited. Thanks guys for helping me blow up over the last few months. Blah, blah, blah. And then this snotty friend could be like, interesting how he didn't mention you, his girlfriend, who completely made you famous. But instead it's just this like unnatural conversation. Then we go and meet Jordan Van something and his whole brand is like early 2010s Kesha, I think. Here and I'm bad I get paid on the mean streets of Palais. Okay, Jordan getting street credit on the internet for being from the Pacific Palisades is the definition of white privilege. Also, if you put a lab coat on him, he would look like a full grown adult doctor on Grey's Anatomy. And they have him on this screen pretending to be a high school senior with the abs of a beach body coach. For those who don't know, the Pacific Palisades are a like beautiful neighborhood in Los Angeles that's like tucked between the Santa Monica Mountains and the Pacific Ocean ocean. It's a wealthy area for sure. So anyway, now we're meeting the love interest of our movie. His name is Cameron Queller, or as I like to think of him, Mr. Scummy Mustache Man, Junior the Third. <laughs> Jordan's this super popular guy in your grade and you're just a- uh... Found the truth in a world of bullshit. Yes. You're welcome. Yes, yes, you're so authentic and real. Now, are those clip-in hair extensions or did you just glue a track to the inside rim of that hat? Anyway, sorry, what were you saying about being the most generic teen outcast character on earth? This guy is 100% Heath Ledger in 10 Things I Hate About You mixed with, I don't know, a dead corpse who I hate. But he's not a complete loner, okay? He does have one friend and you can tell he has like artistic preferences. Dude. You cleaned out all the sun chips. Uh-huh, yeah, so. So now, what delicious PepsiCo snack product am I supposed to enjoy slash mention by name during this scene, Cameron? Should it be Doritos or Smart Food? 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 Doritos! That's this movie for the next 100 minutes. And it's only 90 minutes long, so it's, I don't know what's up. From this conversation, you basically can tell that Cameron is snobby. He's like, your friend's music is terrible and twee and he hates everyone, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, Madison, I guess they all have like unlimited time before school. Like she's like on set for a music video and she goes to school later. Anyway, she surprises Jordan at his trailer where there are two bags of Cheetos in the background. But get this, she is streaming all of the action live, which is uh, unfortunately a bad thing. Jordan! Jordan! What are you doing? Hey, let's not freak out here, okay? Oh my god, I'm so, so sorry. Hatchet, I'm such a big fan. Who in the five-star Amazon review wig is this, Jordan? You TikTok stars don't even deserve full-length music videos if your backup dancers are gonna hit the set looking like it's Girls Weekend at Daytona Beach on a budget. Value hotel, mama. Anyway, they kind of slut shame this woman named Aniston the whole time. They're like, what kind of name is Aniston? I'm like, your name is Paget. But maybe it's supposed to be a joke. She's like, it's a family name. So maybe she's supposed to be related to Jennifer Aniston, but then wouldn't it be her last name? Yes. Even made it with almond flowers and you fart during your precious video. I think I just saw 
about Jordan Ventrain and Sting. Not too shabby, Jerry did. Please tell me the old lady didn't just make that comment in response to glimpsing a teenager's penis. How come Netflix can say stuff like that, but then when I publish a negative review of their movie, it's me who's breaking the law. So funny. Weird how you're in control of that, Netflix. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Madison sort of has a meltdown and she's yelling at him, calling him a croak and douche. You're still alive. Um, that seems like something you could really help out with, girl who's holding the phone and following the action. I don't know why it takes Paget until the end of the movie to realize that Alton was intentionally live on the scene recording that mental breakdown like she's trying to major in broadcast journalism next year. I feel like it really spoils the character arc, like twist that we get with Alden's character at the end of the movie. And they could have planned it so much better, like if she had Alden sneak in and put the hidden camera there, so that he, it could be like a hidden camera video, but instead of recording it, she had it stream live. And then she could be like, I'm sorry, I thought you wanted it to be live. You know, like that could be more funny. But no, this is what we get. So the whole freak out goes live. Patches at home, totally heartbroken, but don't worry, because her mom has come in to soothe her with product. Missing school today? Uh, mom, I'm fine. Lucky charms, mom. I know it's not really what you eat anymore, but it used to cheer you up when you were eight. And that's why I woke up today and thought, oh, lucky charms. And then I poured your bowl and served it alongside another sealed container with the logo on it. And now we're having this little secondary chat about it to round out the integration. I mean, dialogue. It's insane to me that you can tell which brands paid extra to have the product integrated into the script and not just put on a counter. Do it yourself. Mm, wow. And the marshmallows. I forgot about the marshmallows. You did not forget about the marshmallows, Rachel Lee Cook, because those are literally the charms that the name is defining. This is just extra talking that's supposed to remind adults that it's okay for us to still eat sugary cereals. Well, I don't need your help with that Netflix or Lucky Charms because at this age, all of my bad ideas about what foods to eat are not going anywhere. I already associate your product with happy thoughts. Please just leave me alone. So after that plot averting pep talk from mother, Paget gets a very alarming FaceTime from Quinn at school. Guess you haven't looked online today? Uh, how could this happen? Hey, so like a few people are being kind of mean. A few? That's me calling my therapist when I got two polite comments about my audio sounding weird. I can handle constructive feedback, but sometimes I have to suppress my initial reaction, which is to become Carrie Bradshaw in Paris. If someone comments, Nick, your mic is too loud, I'm like, I am a person in this relationship. Have you any idea what it's been like for me here? I publish two videos a week. It's so just, it's hard. So apparently this girl has gone viral. Who's Bubble Girl? Uh, you are. Oh my God. Honestly, Bubble Girl, this is as good as it gets in terms of becoming a meme because you own the copyright to that live stream. Just sell that GIF as an NFT and you could probably pay off your freshman year of college right now. Next. Right after that, Addison's character gets a call from Jessica Miles Torres, her sponsor over at Viral Bunny or Bunny Venom, who is a familiar face you might recognize. You're going viral in the wrong way. Well, it is unfortunate. My ex-husband's hiking accident was unfortunate and he was mauled by bears. Is he okay? Better than you. Really working up a sweat there, aren't we, Courtney? Jessica does nothing but give Paget attitude for this whole movie. Although I don't know why she's so high and mighty when she seems to live exclusively in one particular corner of this rooftop deck. If Bunny Venom is such a thriving brand, then why do you sleep in a gazebo, girl boss? I also recall Addison Rae being on an episode of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, where she's like kind of grilled by the other sisters for being friends with Courtney. Kardashian. What the f do you do to Courtney to make her so happy? We were like, wait, are they? I'm still thinking that. Hooking up. If it was like that kind of relationship. <laughs> As though this 20 year old is the weird one for befriending a 40 something year old, like ask Courtney why she's friends with a child. Anyway, I don't know if that friendship is what led to this cameo in the movie or vice versa, but 
doesn't matter, not to me. You were betrayed, mistreated, humiliated. The difference is you completely lost it in front of like a lot of people. Oop, they forgot to give Courtney a specific direction on what to do with her arm in that shot, so she just kept it stowed at a right angle on her lap. This movie does a bad job at making it clear why public opinion sways against Paget when she's the one who got cheated on. What if she like caught him cheating and then like stormed out on set and started streaming how mad she was but somehow it all works out uh, because she made a spectacle of herself that uh, she looks like a jealous bully towards Aniston. Then it would make sense why some of the, her followers are suddenly hashtag Team Aniston. And it can be a comment on how fickle online audiences might be when they don't have the uh, like full story. And it can kind of set up for us this character flaw in Paget, where she's like a little bit manipulative and a little bit vengeful and compulsive. That would explain why she enters into this kind of of selfish bet later on because as it is they make Paget seem way too perfect she's like I have a perfect life and I have straight A's and I have a beautiful smile but my worst secret is I'm not as rich as people think like mm -mm, that's not flawed enough because you're still good at dancing and you still have a hot bod so like w I don't care your problems don't seem real to me especially if it's just like one sponsor you're pulling my sponsorship that's really problematic for my college wow this is really highlight how TikTok doesn't pay their creators for any of the ads they run on the platform. Meaning TikTokers depend mainly on brand sponsorships for income, which we already know are opportunities that are given disproportionately to thin white people. Wait, is that how Addison Rae and Charlie D'Amelio got more famous than the creators of the dances they went viral for? Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm getting it. Name one other social media app where a person could have half a million followers and either be like a mainstream celebrity or still work at the bank. That to me doesn't seem equitable and it's not like a good place for influencers to excel unless you're one particular ad friendly type of person. I think TikTok should find a way to help its creators get paid proportionately to the amount of impressions that they bring into the site. But anyway, it's basically setting up the conflict where Jessica's like, uh, don't talk to me till you got your followers back. Click. Meanwhile, I'm already not liking the fishy smell around Alden. She kind of brought it on herself. You're saying she deserved it? After years of this hot boyfriend, insta-perfect corporate sponsor trade, I mean, something had to give. I really hope that it was supposed to be comedy that she said corporate sponsor charade right as Quinn was shown holding a core water bottle the size of a telephone pole. When it cuts to the wide shot, it literally looks like two girls having lunch with their best friends who are human-sized water bottles. Like those are Barbie proportions. A lot of leaps are made in logic in this conversation, so I just need you to buckle in. Makeovers are my thing, and I made that guy. So why don't you just make another Jordan? Why don't you just adjust your false eyelashes so they lay flat when you blink. There's another question since your Miss Unsolved Mystery is over here. I wish that I had more establishment that Paget had somehow made Jordan famous. Like if he had been like, shout out to my girl who, you know, included me in her first video that made me famous, like whatever. Show me how he made her famous. If you mention it off screen, I'm like, it's hard to believe. And that's really important for me understanding why her whole brand is making people over and it's important that she's able to show that she did it again. Like is she well known for being the person who in invented Jordan. They could have given us some indication of that. You're gonna create another internationally renowned egomaniac? No, but I will create the next prom king. We just have to find the perfect white boy. I mean any boy, because it's 2021. Just, you know, keep them mostly white. But of course, we have to up the stakes. It wouldn't be a remake of She's All That, where Freddie Prince Jr. made a bet that he couldn't make this loser girl played by Rachel Lee Cook into the prom queen. This will be me, proving that once again, I can take anything or anyone and make them popular. And once we win prom king and queen, I'll give back all my followers and my sponsorship. Mm, do we really have to? Can't you just like start a Patreon? On or become a scientist like you wanted as a kid. That way this movie can cease to exist. Alden, for some reason, brings up a bet that they instantly both know what they're talking about, and but they don't tell us. You don't think I can do it? I do think it'll be fun watching you try. A bet. The bet. You know, the one we always talked about. Are you sure that's a good idea? Uh, sure. 
It'll just make it more fun when I win. That's literally the whole point of betting on something, but okay. I don't want to sound condescending, but I think it's really important that these kids make it to class and pay really close attention. I think I nailed that. Condescension who? Why? It's Condescension Tatas, the newest and most sultry showgirl in Hollywood. Hey, big spender! Sometimes I create new characters when the ones on screen are like melted vanilla ice cream that just spilled on the f***ing floor. So they do that little thing where they're like, maybe him? No, too hot. No, him? No, too cold. But it's like, oh, that guy's sketchy and sells drugs. Oh, that guy's a nerd and overweight. But then they come upon Kaka Cameron. You better shut your mouth. Quiller, what the hell are you doing? Just taking pictures of what the waitress at this school throw away. Okay, I may not know what word you just used to describe your classmates, but I do know that your photography isn't good enough to justify that smug tone. You just showed me a whole ass slideshow that looked like it was taken by the field trip chaperone with shaky hands. Like none of those pictures were interesting. It looks like discarded B-roll from that Khalid music video. Also, I just checked the subtitles on Netflix, which tell me he calls the other students waste rolls. So I guess he doesn't just have the hair of a Victorian and chimney sweep, but the vocabulary as well. The way that they are unable to control his fake hair until the makeover scene is hilarious to me. Like he'll be talking this way and his hair is having a conversation with someone over there. <laughs> anyway, the girls are like, that's who we're gonna pick. <laughs> My bad, bro. <laughs> he is a total disaster. I mean, he's literally equally as annoying as you, just in different ways. The script doesn't do much to establish Cameron as like a school-wide outcast as much as it just makes him seem like someone who has beef with Jordan because he's always antagonizing him. <laughs> Put a shirt on, dude. I don't want to stare at your underwear while I eat. You posers call this music? Please. <laughs> Okay, there's a lot of verbal and physical aggression happening at this school. Maybe we need to have another sing-along assembly on bullying because an outdoor trash can just collapsed into that young man's taint. The trailer showed that thing where he's like, I don't want to see your underwear when I eat. And it's like, what kind of example is that of how he's like, an outcast, like he's just mean. What happened to live and let live? People can wear what they want. Also, I don't know what school would let a guy walk around shirtless like this, but whatever. That's gender inequality. Mama, sis, father, brother, people, they, them. I know this movie was shot during quarantine, so maybe that's the reason why no one on set could even fathom a situation that didn't involve Cameron saying something rude to Jordan and then having food splattered on him. The crew was like, honestly, let's just shoot the same thing three times because we kind of just need to grab 90 minutes worth of footage before one of these TikTok stars dies of COVID from going to Saddle Ranch Steakhouse every night. Also, I don't know why, but it really bugged me that, uh, can that Jordan had the same like underwear waistband visible in all of those little vignettes because it shows me like they just rushed through that and shot it all in like one afternoon. They're like, all right, now let's go to this part of the school. And you don't like you showing his underwear. This part of the school, you say, stop playing your music. Like it's lazy. And for one of the scenes to call attention to the underwear and then for me to see the same distinct Versace pattern in all three of them, I'm like, does he have one pair of underwear? Why do I care about that more than the actual plot? So anyway, after deciding Addison is like all up on this guy, she goes to try to like make an introduction and he brushes her off. I'm so sorry about him. He's literally like that with everybody. He's my brother. Um, Bryn Queller, sophomore. Hi Bryn Queller, my name is Paget Sawyer. And later you can meet some of my other friends with equally normal names, such as Paterina Greenwich or Gratuliana F Face. I swear, when either Netflix or Disney need to come up with unique sounding names for their teen characters, they just feed peyote to a bunch of suburban moms and write down everything they hear. Hi, I'm McAllister Matena Tatana Nata. I'm Gloopy Droid Monster. Okay, my name's Nick. Also, shout out to all the Brins and Pagets that are out there watching this. I do understand that your names are real, but I'm betting that when you say your full name, it doesn't sound like it was made up by a screenwriter. Also, um, I love the actress who plays Bryn Queller. Her name is Isabella Crovetti. She gives off very authentic sophomore energy in this movie. I don't know why. So if he doesn't like people, what does he like? The photography, allegedly. <laughs> no one ever gets to see any of his pictures, so. Um, I'm sorry, but if someone I knew was taking pictures of the school without showing anybody, I would be calling the Department of Homeland Security on their ass. I don't care if he is my older brother. If you see something, you can say something. You go ahead, FBI, question him 
about those photo developing chemicals all you like. I'll be moving my stuff into his bedroom because it's slightly larger. What about movies? The same thing. Everything's Kurosawa, Kung Fu, or Kubrick. Oh my, that is a lot of K's. It was three K's to be specific, so probably should have picked another letter to execute that joke with. Anyway, by the way, I was g g, -g gagged when I saw Miss Addison Ray here, like excitedly going up to Donald Trump and being like, I had to say hi. Like, no, you didn't. You have to walk away. And Trump, though I guess Addison Ray is a, don't tell me you're not a Trump supporter if you literally like wanted to shake his hand like he's Mickey Mouse at the fucking Magic Kingdom. I don't buy it. Bryn tells him that aside from photography, he also loves horses. He spends every morning taking care of his horse at Will Rogers Park. I could have sworn we'd gone there as like a rehab excursion when I was in treatment. You know when you're an alcoholic so you get to play with a horse one day? That's, it helps, it helps. Have you ever seen 28 Days? Here's Quinn, no, what is the, everyone's name, Paget. And every time I say Paget, I think of Vaget, and I'm like, Vagina? Your name is Vagina? Okay, Vagina Sawyer. <laughs> <gasps> and then I think of Paget Brewster, who is an amazing character actor, and I love. I was hoping to take a writing lesson this morning. Uh, look, I have a lot of work to get done before school. Uh, so, so let me help. Then if there's time afterwards, we could squeeze in a lesson. She is such a typical influencer, always asking for free goods and services just because of her following. The only time I've ever done that was when somebody recognized me from YouTube at a gay bar, so I asked them to take me to the hospital. But I mean, I was lying on the dance floor with a broken ankle because I tried to incorporate real water into my rain on me choreography. Anyway, this guy who's supposed to hate everyone, especially popular people, is like, fine, I'll give you a free lesson if you help me shovel this poop. Oh yeah, we're at the fecal point of the movie too, like where you actually have to see feces, so. Horse feces. Horse feces, do you love it, Netflix? Netflix at the beginning has to be like, coarse language, smoking. Also tell me when there's simulated poop. So, you really come here every day before school? Yep, ever since I was 14. Sweetheart, get your fingers away from your mouth. You were just shoveling manure. Also, what time is this kid waking up every morning? I'm supposed to believe that this kid is up at 4 a.m. every day to brush his horse when he can't even put that same effort into his own hair? That's weird. That's odd. This movie has plenty of like Wattpad fan fiction energy where this girl is just like, so not like other girls, like such a dork. Oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm such a dork. So, do you have any previous writing experience? Just one time at a birthday party when I was five. I think it was a baby horse. I believe the word you're looking for is pony. Oh my God, it's so embarrassing. Some girls like know how to flirt and like say the right word for things. And I'm just like some random dork who says baby horse. Like, why is anyone even friends with me? Honestly though, like even though like that's the tea. I hate the overacting, even what's his f***ing name? Who's been in a lot of TV shows. I think it's, it's all pushed to the extreme here. I believe the word you're looking for is pony. Like, all right, bulging eyes. You can't enjoy this without sharing it with like 500 strangers. 500? Try 887,000. 132. You take pictures? What's the difference? Too vast to even explain. Not really. In fact, the only difference I can spot is that there are people who actually want to see her photos while nobody even knows who you are or cares what you do. He's like, you're not gonna understand the difference because you're a girl, but it can't be considered art if people are able to actually look at and enjoy it. There's no such thing as popular art. That's not even a thing, but you're so cute. You're so cute for trying though. I would never, never fall for a guy like this. I would be like, why don't you stay here with that horse's d in your mouth? Oh, <laughs> I said it. I talked about the horse sex. I knew it was gonna come out. I was trying not to do it, but I'm keeping it in because dad had sex with the horse that day. All right, get ready, feces. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for laughing. It's just, I mean, aren't you captain of the dance team? So <laughs> <laughs> what? It's mostly grass, right? <laughs> <laughs> Were you two huffing the wood varnish before this scene got started? Your laughter is coming off as very unhinged and Paget fully picked up horse poop with her bare hands to throw it at another person. That is pet chimpanzee behavior, mama. Go get some Kleenex. Also, it irritates me that they have already taken two opportunities in the first act to mention that Paget is the leader of the dance team, but they haven't actually shown it. It's just unusual since dancing is like one of the most visual forms of moving 
art to exist. Sort of like film, you know, that thing that this is attempting to be. Also, she's like, it's a mostly just grass, right? They must have cut out a line where he's like, it's mostly just grass, because we didn't hear that. Also, why it doesn't matter that she's the captain of the dance team when he pulled her off a horse and threw her into a pile of shit. Like, what are you the captain of, giving me E. coli? Cameron is always now, suddenly, also talking about how he wants to travel the world after school. He's got too many things going on. His photography, his horse, his wanderlust, and now his weird way of holding and eating food. Start in Amsterdam. Uh, Queller, can we maybe do this later as a French quiz? But these are like the best friends I've seen in months. Cameron, I can't even understand what you're saying. Mostly because you're mumbling, also because I'm distracted by you cradling that bag of Doritos like a ball sack. Logo out, mama. That's how I'm gonna start drinking from this can. Merch, feature the merch. Mm. No, hydrated. Movies making me nuts. You know how sometimes I say I feel like a movie made me sick? I had a dry throat and irritated nasal passages throughout the time of making this movie, or no, making this video. It took me a full week. I think I was just adjusting to the desert air, but I blame this movie for weakening my mucous membranes. I have so many anal fissures. I'm sitting in a pool of blood right now. <laughs> <laughs> we also find out that Cameron doesn't have a hip phone, okay? He's old school with his old school phone. But Paget comes up and invites him to a party. I just wanted to say thank you for this morning. My butt is so sore. I can barely walk. Things got messy. Uh, context, please? <laughs> Misha, it's not what you're thinking, okay? They were rolling around in horse together. In order to thank Cameron for the lesson, uh, Paget invites the two of them to Quinn's karaoke party later on that day. And uh, basically, Misha is like, this will be a start to your world adventure, just close to home. So convinces him to go. They show up, turns out it's a pool party. I don't know why Paget didn't tell them that. That seems kind of rude, but you know, also they could have made it intentional where they're like, oh, you have to get a TikTok of him looking out of place so that you can do a before and after. And then she's like, like, okay, I'll trick him into coming in his not bathing suit. Like, they could have done something there that makes Paget seem like she's really gung-ho about winning this bet, which we so far only know as the bet, the one we've been talking about forever. Like, we don't even know what the bet is. I hate, I hate. Wow, it's a pool party. I mean, what are we even doing here? You know, come on. Ooh, whoa. Eating free Pizza Hut is what we're doing. The Pizza Hut is actually a dollar a slice. The money is going towards freshman Dylan Q's emergency brain surgery. It's not actually a profitable fundraising method, but you know, it gives the rich kids a storyline that seems a little more shareable for their pool party TikToks. Besides, when do you get to make fun of these guys in their own natural habitat? That's <laughs> true. Isn't he doing that literally all day, every day when he talks to them negatively about their personal interests? It's not true. You're just saying stuff. I hate it. These characters aren't even acting like the characters they set us up to be because he's sticking around for no reason. Oh, that you may be just a bit jealous of me. Yeah, it sounds like they're constipated, but for some reason they're happy about it. <laughs> Sorry, but that's actually what you just sounded like. You wanna make jokes about constipation when you deliver most of your lines like they're an over-hardened stool. But anyway, of course, Padgy comes up and greets them. I'm going to college in New York, so won't be doing this next year. Where are you guys going? I'm kinda opting out of that whole thing. Oh, like a gap year. Followed by another gap year, and then a gap life. Did he just say he wants to work at the gap his whole life? I hope so, because I feel like his character needs a little more motivation than loving photography and also horses. They later to reveal that Cameron's mother is dead. So I wish that they could tie in his photography interest more closely, like something that his mother did and he learned from her rather than just like, he, she, she supported me by giving me this camera. Also, like, he says gap year, gap life, but doesn't explain it. He's like, why, if he could give a reason that made sense for him, like, why would I go to photography school to learn about taking pictures when I could travel the world and actually take them? At least then it's like a logical explanation and not just like, you just, so you just wanna go never have a job. Queller doesn't believe in college. Really? I believe it exists. I just think it's a huge waste of time and money. So. Paget said, okay, I'm gonna ski past that red flag a little faster so that way I don't even see it. This guy thinks a college degree is a waste of time and money in today's job market. He's like, I don't need to learn anything else even though I could afford it because after I graduate, I'm going to be living my life as a horse, crawling on the ground and eating grass for free. Because the task of reviewing this movie was so laborious for me. I was not eating right, my fridge was empty, which is why I was so relieved when my box came from every plate. Every plate is the 
the sponsor of today's video, and they are truly the best value meal kit in America. I know because I've tried other ones and they are way too expensive, but every plate gives you the same great quality ingredients and delicious recipes for less. Every plate has really been helping me make sure that I'm staying healthy and having a cheaper alternative to takeout that ends up being just as delicious and probably more satisfying. I think of it like this, one serving of an every plate meal costs about the same as a cup of coffee. So now I just think of every plate as the one-stop shop that plans and shops and delivers all of the things I need for healthy food. Plus, I know that every plate has made me into a more intuitive home cook. Look at this delicious pasta and kale creamy dish that I put together last night. I honestly don't even remember doing it. It was that effortless, which is a sign that every plate has also been improving my skills in the kitchen. Get started with every plate for just $1.99 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering code NICTORAMIA199. Listen, just because I know how to cook, it doesn't mean this movie isn't cooked. Mama, it's cooked. Now we get a little, our first ever glimpse of Addison's like performing talent that she's apparently had that makes her the captain of the dance team. They honestly needed to establish the dance team in the first act so that I could see who else is on it, how impressive they are, what the school's reaction to it is. All of that would help me really understand Addison's popularity more than, the, than I do. Yeah, we all see that you're a teenager, honey, so there's no need to show off with your superior joint flexion. Do you know how much collagen I would have to consume in order to pinwheel my elbow that fast? I would be slurping the bone marrow out of an entire side of beef just to get through the warm-up. That being said, for this to be the first dance sequence that Addison Ray performs, I would kind of like to see a little more complexity, not just like step touching in her wedge sandals. Can someone remind her that we don't shoot vertically for real movies so she can take up a little more space? Move around a little bit. <laughs> I don't even know why she bothers with college. She might as well just get a residency in Vegas, am I right? You are wrong. I mean, she actually sounds like she's trying to sing back up to Katy Perry. My heart stops just one touch. Don't ever look back. Don't ever look back. That's her. Like, I, just based off this karaoke performance, I don't think anyone would say they see her at a Vegas residency. As a resident of Vegas, sure, because that's like the mecca for dancers who are just okay. But next, Paget's show-stopping performance is interrupted when Jordan shows up, her ex-boyfriend, along with Aniston, the girl he cheated with. Of course, Alden is like, I invited him. I didn't think he'd show up with her. Like, just don't invite him. Isn't that supposed to be your best friend? Anyway, Paget's like unable to sing because she's nervous and that's when Cameron, despite never mentioning that he could sing ever before this, gets up on stage and sings with her and everyone is like, whoa, that was impressive. So it's sort of Cameron's first step out into the spotlight where people are like, weird, kid's okay, I think. Pretty sure that is my cue to call for a car. Don't do that. We'll give you a ride. Can I get some KFC to go? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Nisha, you did not just snatch a family-sized bucket of fried chicken off the table on your way to the door. Now you won't just be the third wheel during this car ride, you'll also be the one causing it to smell like a food court. You have a really great voice. Yeah, camera was in the glee club. What? I didn't know it was a cigarette. And I didn't know you were the greasy chicken gremlin who lives in my backseat. Whatever Colonel Sanders paid to have his product featured on screen was obviously not enough for them to get a food stylist on set because that drumstick has more exposed muscle and dangling flesh than Gary Busey's also, just randomly mentioning like, oh, Cameron was in a Glee Club is super annoying because it's like, they could have brought that up in a better way. Like later, the little sister is like, you've changed so much since, you know, mom died. If they had made it seem like singing or the Glee Club was something that he did back when his mom was alive and then gave up after she died, that would be more powerful rather than her just throwing it out this minute to explain why he could just barely carry a tune for f Katy Perry. Before she gets out of the car, Addison's character puts her little clutch in the car, like leaves it there on purpose, while being like, oh, I don't know anyone who lives in this building, because Nisha's like, my cousin lives here. And she's like, well, f you, I'm lying. And then the next day, we find out that this little singing session has caught the attention of the entire world. Do anything interesting? Not really. More than 2.6 million TikTok viewers back to <laughs> <laughs> 
I wish that he just puked blood all over her face and then this turned into a zombie movie. But for real, he was so surprised, it looked like there was actual bile in that spit take. He said, Bleh. Next, this whole annoying thing with phone calls happens. I'm like, how is this a good use of screen time? Paget calls Bryn and is like, hey, can I come pick up something I left in your brother's car? I don't have his number. And I'm like, how did you get her number? And then while she, they're going to get the door, Paget gets another call from Jessica Miles Torres, who is basically like, oh, I saw your singing thing. Looks like we're moving in the right direction. I'm like, girl, you just crammed two phone calls into one minute of screen time instead of actually showing me something like the story happening. Ah! Ah! Whoa, that just hit my light and then stayed there. It's right here. That was cool. That one's meant to stay on the desk. Sorry I got mad. Okay, so we learn a little bit more about Cameron and Bryn's family. Our dad lives in Sweden and once a year he sends us these all-in-one presents. Kind of like Christmas and Hanukkah and our birthdays all smushed together. Why are we bringing this into the story? Coloring books, Legos, and Swedish Helga Barbie. Quite a haul, if you're eight. At least he's trying. Yeah, trying to abandon you. Girl, that father of yours is touring the Swedish countryside while you try to swing a B plus in science with the help of your brother and his bad hair extensions and your dead mom. It is the glass castle up in this Queller household. Jesus. Of course, doesn't stop Paget for asking for more free stuff. I was hoping you could give me another writing lesson. Um, yeah. You're in luck, I was on my way to the stage. Hey, States. I thought you were gonna watch the Blue Bloods Marathon with me. Yeah, and I thought you were gonna put all that sh back in the medicine cabinet, Grandma. You got the living room looking like the back of a Walgreens, you piece of trash. Anyway, I'll drive. I love how Paget walked up into this house and started asking for favors without even acknowledging the whole ass lady sitting in the chair across from her. The grandma is like a non-existent character in this, even though she's supposed to be the guardian of Cameron. So while they're out riding, they talk about how Cameron doesn't show his pictures. You know, no one would have ever heard of Dean Arbus or Ansel Adams if they just hid in their dark room all day. <laughs> What? I just can't believe you actually know those names. Well, I can't believe we haven't seen you without a stupid f***ing hat on your head since this movie started. But I guess that's just how bad his lace front wig looked on the screen tests. And how is it not insulting to say, I'm so surprised that you knew the name of two very famous photographers? Like, I would be surprised if you even knew how to f take a picture properly since you never show anyone. I can't Google names. It's very trite, very overdone. I hate it. You show me yours and I'll show you mine. Oh, everyone has seen yours. <laughs> Sorry, that came out way dirtier than I intended it to. <laughs> There's literally more on-screen chemistry between those two bored horses than between the lead actors. This dialogue makes me want to middle school bully some kids so badly, I'll tell you that much. Next, Cameron takes her to Union Station, a train station downtown that he likes to take photos in because he's so cool. So you've really never been to Union Station? Honestly, I didn't even know this was here. That was literally two garbage photos of nothing. He said, I captured photographic evidence that the McDonald's ice cream machine was working. People don't mind you just taking their picture. And sometimes I ask permission, sometimes I don't. After a while, you kind of develop a sense of when it's okay to shoot. Oh, I see. So you decide whether or not to ask for permission based on your finely tuned internal sense of whether or not you feel like it. What a uniquely cis male perspective. I am sure that really comes through in your artwork that you're too scared to show us. I hate this character. Jeans and tell latte are insane. Mm-hmm. Wait, are you actually smiling? What? I've never seen you like this. He's actually been smiling an abnormal amount throughout the movie up until this point. It's just that most of those times it was because he was looking down on you or directly making fun of you to your face. But it's fun that you see that as personal growth. What a free thinker you kids are. At school, you're reserved. At the stables or here with your camera. No one in those places ever keyed the word loser into my truck door or put a fetal pig in my backpack. Now, how come they couldn't have included either of those events in that montage about what a loser you are, rather than just three very similar interactions with one person? Besides, I already told you that I need a lot of extra collagen, so if he still has any fetal pigs in his backpack, I would love to slurp out their cartilage. Finally, we get deep. We finally get deep when they're on a bench. You know what's boring in a movie? Two people talking on a bench. They taught us that in film school, but apparently Netflix doesn't care about film school or whatever. High school's just a bunch of scary people pretending to be something they're not. Is that why you're wearing a Nickelback wig? Just curious. This place, this place is real. You know, just like horses, best 
detectors in the entire animal kingdom. <laughs> Wait, is that like a known thing about horses? Also, is it trains or horses that you like more? Because this character's like favorite thing list is starting to muddy up the story. They said, how do we make this character seem super intriguing and interesting? <gasps> what if he has hobbies? Her mom died four years ago, plane crash. Oh, so that's why he prefers to take the train. Dead mom cliche, we we have to have it. Someone's mom has to be dead. He was dating this guy named Marcus who flew a turboprop. And one Saturday morning, they were on their way back from Laramie. Okay, the more details you give us, the more this sounds like a rich people tragedy. I'm not saying it makes it less sad. I'm just saying, how is it important for us in the movie to know that your mom died while a guy named Marcus with an expired pilot's license. Like, I, I just wanted an extra dance scene, but okay. He mentions that the camera is a gift that his mom gave him. Then she gets a text from Alden, who's like, are you ready to be branded a loser? Heard it's pretty painful. That's the only other hint we get about the bet they've been talking about their whole lives. And I, when I read that, I was like, I don't remember what they said the bet was about. And then I had to go back and rewind it, and they did not say, because they just said it's the one we've only we talked about. To me, that's like a terrible addition to this movie's plot because like it does not make the stakes higher whatsoever. I don't even know what happens, whether or not she loses this. Anyway, Addison is like, listen, my friend Alden is having a drop it like it's F. Scott birthday party. So it's like, Great Gatsby theme. She somehow invites the little sister and Misha, the friend, as well. And then, you know, it wouldn't be the second act of a goddamn movie made for children without a goddamn montage of trying on goddamn clothes. So cheap, so boring, so overdone. Is it me or you but something making me feel brand new? Feeling brand new. Since this montage is wasting 60 full seconds of my life, everyone in this scene owes me one minute of their life expectancy. Addison Ray is gonna get a cameo request from me where I just make her smoke an entire menthol cigarette on camera. They literally try to make a scene out of like all of them trying on hats and scarves. It's like, you don't try on a scarf. They're like, oh, ha, ha, I'm putting it on this way. It's like, you didn't even have the time to change into real costumes to show me multiple costumes. Then it goes into Cameron's makeover scene where other confusing stuff happens. Like she uses an epilator to rip out his facial hair one by one. It's called a razor, sis. The same thing you use to clean up that with. Nope. I shouldn't say that. Here's the reveal of Cameron, and it's honestly the first time this poor actor gets to look not like a dirtbag in the movie. I love to raise, I feel so much, I get carried away, yeah. Breaking news in the heterosexual world, some shampoo and a little bit of concealer makes you look less Paget's like, I invented male grooming. You can barely tell he's wearing foundation. Let's go to that stupid party. <laughs> So many Charlestons. Those extras were like, what kind of dances did they do in the 20s? I don't know, I'm just gonna try and kick really high. Also, I would like to give a medal of bravery to the high school kids who heard this was a great Gatsby themed party and showed up in an old timey bathing suit like Pugsley from the Addams Family. That is commitment to the gig. They mentioned the bet one more time and like, I guess we'll see who's gonna be a loser for life. And it's like, I literally at this point don't know what that means and I'm starting to not care. Also inside, Jordan is upset because Aniston broke up with him and so he's gonna now try to get back with the magic <laughs> magic <laughs> That's Maggot and Paget mixed together, sorry. We're at the 40 minute mark-ish of this movie and it's about high time we got to some lesbianism. Netflix. Nice costume. <sighs> didn't think I'd see another Jordan Baker. Daisy is so overrated. Yeah, she didn't even know how to eat that Am I right, English teachers? Also, you really thought you'd be the only person to dress as Jordan Baker? This is California. Half the girls on the track team at this school are femme tops. This is where Paget finally tells off Jordan when he tries to win her back and is like, our followers would love it if we got voted prom queen. She's like, I don't even care. And by the way, there are no mean streets of Pally. You live on the same block as Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, well, her daughter Apple was a total when she said she could smell weed outside my bedroom window. That's mean streets. That's what I mean by mean street. That's where Bryn, the little sister, happens upon Jordan. He's like, hey, you wanna go get a drink? And it's like, you're drinking sponsored energy drinks. I feel like that's a bang energy drink or something. I don't know what it is. But either way, they go off together while Aid, no, Quint, Paget and Bran, Bren, Cameron, 
these names. They go in the photo booth together, they have a cute moment, they're falling for one another, who cares? And as happy birthday is being sung to Alden, whose birthday it is, Brynna comes a running out. Hey, Bren, what's going on? Why are you making such a big deal out of this? It was nothing. We were just kissing, but then he started going for more, so I bonked him with the pool ball. Wow, what an intense, suspenseful sounding story. It almost sounds like it could have made a great scene in this movie if anyone had bothered to write it. But instead, Bryn is just giving us her podcast version of the event while carrying a prop from that more interesting scene and declaring it as her weapon like she just won a game of Clue. I don't know why they couldn't have just shown us this scene uh, and then it makes Cameron and uh, Paget seem more heroic, like where Cameron comes in, he's like, hey, what's going on in here, blah, blah, blah. And then they like all escape from the party together, but instead we don't see any of that. Like, come on. So this means that Cameron and Jordan have to start fighting now. <laughs> Anyone who has ever owned a camera is cringing over where he chose to set that down. If that's how he treats his most prized possession, imagine how ratty tat tattered his boxer shorts must be, Addison. His best pair of underwear probably looks like a primitive loin cloth with Hanes printed on the waistband. But during this fight, Cameron is able to like duck all of the moves because his third interest, along with blah, 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 and shut the fuck up, is kung fu movies. So you know how watching kung fu makes you an instant kung fu expert? Like, you know how that happens? So, you know, basically Cameron wins the fight by getting a good knockout on Jordan, and then this happens. Don't forget your camera. No, 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 no! Don't worry, Cameron. When you got that camera as a gift, it included an accidental damage policy. The only thing is like, how much access do you have to your dead mom's email account? He's mad at, at Paget now. He's like, why did you start talking to me all of a sudden? And Alden is like, you really are falling for him, aren't you? I'm just worried about him, okay? That's all. You saw what happened. Look, if you want to watch on our bet now, I understand. I mean, the guy's a bigger train wreck than we expected. No. We're still on. The stakes have never been higher or lower, or maybe they've stayed exactly the same. We're not sure because these teens have not yet revealed what the loser of this bet has to do. If you want me to care about Paget trying to win back all of her followers, then the bet that Alden proposes should escalate that conflict to its life or death extreme. Like when I drink a cold brew coffee before shopping at Target and fully hallucinate that I am on a civil war battlefield. I think uh, we need to A, know what the bet is, and B, I'm gonna tell you what the bet should be. Something that makes Addison's issue of needing to gain back her followers more extreme. For example, maybe we find out that even though Paget is the one who made Jordan famous, he already has a million followers and she's still trying to get up to one million. That way it's making a comment on how like male influencers have an easier time gaining popularity. And that, and then maybe like Alden is a TikToker too and the two of them are trying to race to get to one million followers first because that entitles them to some sort of privilege in the Palisades maybe. A a good bet would be if Alden is like, the loser of this bet has to turn their TikTok account private until the end of the school year or until the other person hits a million followers. And that way the other person gets to be the first girl at Pally to hit one million followers. And it makes it harder for Addison to ever solve her problem of earning the money for school. Maybe Alden is even like, hey, if you win, I'll pay for your first semester at college. So you don't even have to worry about a sponsorship. Like that would be a good bet because then I understand what's happening and why it needs to happen. It would make a uh, Paget situation seem more dire and make a lot more sense when she does things like pretend that she doesn't care about Cameron. That would show that she still hasn't fully learned her lesson yet. She basically starts falling for him before the makeover, which doesn't make it seem like she's learning to be less shallow through this experience. Seems like she doesn't change at all actually. In the meantime, after the party, Alden hooks up with Jordan. So not good friendship. She said, there, all clean, except for all this eyeliner and three layers of mascara. I get that you wanna to pretend to remove your makeup as gracefully as cartoon Mulan, but that doesn't fully demonstrate the makeup dissolving properties of Garnier's micellar water. And without the check from that brand, we won't be able to feed any of the extras who are in the prom scene a little later on. Paget admits she's starting to realize that maybe the true thing about who you are is who you surround yourself with. But then she finds out, oh my God, the fight went viral at the party and that like reignites her like it kind of 
I guess it's supposed to make it seem like she's like, oh, my plan is working, I can't give up now because Jessica's like, this is a good thing. And I'm just like, how come Paget lost her sponsorship from Jessica because she threw pastry at her cheating boyfriend? But then when she goes viral for being involved in a violent brawl with the same boyfriend, it's like suddenly good news and on brand once again. Make it make sense, movie. You're not thinking it through. Like how is another scandal actually working in her favor? It would make more sense, I think what, if what they're trying to show is that the public sentiment is now swinging back in favor of Paget and her new boy, Cameron. If people were like, I'm team Cameron and Paget now because that was crazy how he threw your mom's camera and like show the, if they could show the social media users getting involved in this story as though they're the audience by watching TikTok. Like, you know, when we saw Bryn be like, I think I just saw Jordan's thing. If you could see other girls being like, I'm totally team Cameron. I'm totally team Aniston, you know, whatever. But we do get a temp at it like this when Cameron finds out that he's been nominated for Homecoming King. I'm Celeste. I just wanted to say that while I reject the whole idea of the prom court as an antiquated heteronormative construct. Thank you, Celeste. Finally, someone with the same liberal sensibilities as me in the same fashion sense as Charlize Theron in Mad Max Fury Road. Could you imagine if you actually ran for prom king? <laughs> Could you imagine if you actually ran for prom king? <laughs> Sis, if you force that laughter any harder, you're about to start your period seven days early. So Cameron is like, you know what? To show up Jordan, maybe I will run for prom king. So all of a sudden, Cameron's personality is not Mr. Outside the Norm anymore. He's like, wait, being popular is easy? I just had to get a haircut? Prom king, here I come! Jordan and Alden are a thing now. What the hell is going on? JVD out. You know how you were running for prom queen unopposed? That's actually brand new information to me which is weird because it feels like I've been watching this movie for one century. Netflix says that this title is only 90 minutes long. By the time the final credits rolled, I had a full beard and had soiled myself on the couch as though I had been sitting there for five days. Netflix should make a documentary series about that. Alden is full on villain now. She switched, flip floppity sides. I thought we were friends. Yeah, well, things aren't always the way they seem. You would know, right? You can drop the act. We know you're poor. Stop. Please. Did you really think you were fooling us? She said, you look more middle class than a two week old manicure with your Walgreens body spray. Alden's like, we'll keep your secret for now. But honestly, I don't see how Paget's reputation is more at risk if people find out that she's from a lower income household. Like, won't people be more impressed with her makeover and styling skills if they know she's doing it on a budget? For example, aren't you more impressed with my smile after knowing that I do all my own dental work? Check it, mama. Most of these are still alive. After <laughs> Alden leaves, Quinn is like, I heard her and Jordan are leaving the dance team and starting their own dance troupe. And I'm like, since when was Alden even on the dance team? We never heard that before. Why is everyone hearing things and telling me later when they could show me in a cinematic dance exchange? The lack of dancing in this dance-based movie is probably the most disappointing aspect for me, especially knowing that the real life Addison Rae has a dance background and that's part of the reason why she's famous on TikTok. Like there's only one good dance number. They could have made this like bring it on. And then at least like when the story sucks, we're like, well, they had cool dance numbers. Not that Bring It On had a bad story. I'm thinking more of like the Bring It On sequel. You can tell that Paget and Cameron are getting closer because he lets her into a place that no other girl has ever been. His I'm just kidding. It's a dark room. Ah! I cannot believe you have your own dark room. Yeah. It uh, was my 14th birthday present. So you've been taking pictures your whole life then? Kind of. If you consider from 14 to 18 your whole life. Also, it seems like after his mom died and his dad abandoned the family, they just put some red lights in the extra bedroom and were like, good news, there is a positive side to all of this. You little analog orphan film purist. Also, she's like, oh wow, lovely photos. Touching them with my full oily palm. Girl, have you ever touched a picture? Don't do that. She knocks some things over and while they're getting them, this is so cliche, they just talk. You know you could totally make money at this, right? You know I don't care about money. Must be nice, privilegina. He said, listen, sweetie, my mom died on a private plane. I get monthly life insurance payouts that could buy your whole house and pay for your mom to be my maid for a year. What kind of person doesn't need money? Like, what is he planning to do after college? To live. Keeping your talent locked away? What are you hiding from? I could ask you the same question. What are you talking about? This. 
All right, I'm a little insulted that you wanted the first time you saw me without makeup to be in an actual dark room. Also, I'm pretty sure you just wiped pure hydroquinine on my lips and now I have a massive chemical burn. He's like, you don't need all your hair and your makeup. This is like so outdated too. Like she's not necessarily wearing makeup to hide from people or me like impress men. These. Not the eyelashes, they're glued on pretty tight. He's like, no, really take them off. She's like, ow, they're semi-permanent dude god i'm a tiktok star i don't f with strip lashes they kiss and then that's when cameron says something like i totally trust you and that makes paget feel bad because she's you know deceiving him so she rushes off which obviously leaves cameron confused so he asks for advice from somebody that i think no teenage boy would ever ask advice from like she's your sister man Hey, you got a second? Well, sure. I've got all afternoon. The Old Navy Labor Day sale lasts through Tuesday with two-for-one jeans and new fleece cargo vest for the whole family. The amount of, like, uh, dedicated screen time we give to product placement in this is at, like I want I want to tally up the minutes, but that would require more of my minutes, and I just I gotta move on, sis. I just. Kind of wanted your advice on something. I'm not joking with you, but after watching this movie two and a half times, I went to the grocery store specifically because I could not stop thinking about smart food popcorn. Which, by the way, is a genius name for a snack because while eating it, I'm like, you're right. It is kind of smart to put salty cheese dust on my food. This girl, it knows everything, apparently. First kisses can be awkward. First time having sex, that can be even weirder. So is the last time, because you never know if it's gonna be your last. I definitely found it more shocking for the 14 year old to be offering sex advice than for the old lady, which I'm pretty sure was the opposite of what the screenwriter intended with that joke. Speaking of teens doing inappropriate things. <laughs> Don't forget this extended shot of the sexualized teen bikini car wash is now streaming on Netflix. So whip out those credit cards, perverts. By the way, Bryn's advice was that cause he felt this way and she kissed him, Cameron should prom pose to Addison, which is what happens now. You might not have screwed up as much as you think you did. Oh, oh my God, Cameron. I know this isn't usually my style. Yeah, we saw your usual style. It looked like the underside of your hat probably smelled. Also, not this picture that looks like a zoom and enhance of some bank security camera footage. And then he sharpied prom over the corner like a serial killer. And this is the guy who's like, I'm too smart and talented to go to art school. Like I prom I promise you, you should reconsider. Of course, things don't stay happy forever in the land of this. Yes! Sorry, I hate to interrupt this adorable moment, but Paget, do you think there's something you should tell Cameron first? Well then, what are you doing? She is bringing the chaotic evil energy that we're honestly going to need to keep the plot moving forward on this thing at a rate that won't have me losing my mind from boredom. If Alden weren't here to ruthlessly, pointlessly create conflict like a cartoon villain, the two leads of this movie would just be sitting on screen across from each other like a couple steamy mugs of Quaker oats. But whatever. So now Alden makes Paget admit that she's a bet. I made a bet with Alden that I could take the biggest loser we could find so she could turn him into prom king. But that was before. Wait, that wait, was before wait. I... So I was a bet. No. No, I was a uh-oh, the straight white male has a reason to feel victimized. We need to shut down the streets for about three weeks so that he can rage. And just a warning, but he's probably gonna get so into paintball after this. Also, I haven't seen the original She's All That, but I do know that that is a reference to Rachel Lee Cook's line in the first movie. Am I a bet? Am I a bet? It's not as good here. So uh, naturally, what's his name is really mad at um, what's her name and she can't get through to him on the phone. I just want to make sure you're okay. You're still not answering? No, but can you blame him? Aw, uh, it's too bad we couldn't secure that Dawn dish soap endorsement in time because it's actually more distracting to see a product on screen that isn't showcasing the logo. That box of Lucky Charms is magically already out on the counter. But I guess liquid was not the type of soap that went viral because kids were eating it. So that's a shame. Paget feels really bad. She's like, have, have I? has my whole following just been for money and attention? Did I just do all of this because I'm a bad person? And I found this to be some of the strongest acting when Rachel Lee Cook is sort of being a really loving mother and like, so you made a mistake, we all lose our way sometimes, but you are a good caring person and I know that about you for a fact. So she encourages Paget to actually go to the prom. Meanwhile, Cameron is off sulking about the horse or something, I don't know. 
Oh, Gilly. I thought you were a good judge character. The horse is like, yes, and I literally took a on that girl, so maybe you're just seeing what you want to see. Oh, I forgot to mention that um, Quinn and Nisha become a couple, the two girls who were Jordan Baker. They were like, oh, I'm gonna ask her to prom. So they're a cute couple now. Paget has to apologize to Nisha while they're on their way to the prom, being like, I know I hurt your friend's feelings, but I'm really trying to make it up. And so she finally calls Bryn, the sister. I'm so bored. And I'm sort of steaming in the socks. We've got our muscles. Screw off, bubble girl. You know not to bother me or my family during our smart food power hour. It's the only time of day where we can get the eight to 10 cups of corn we need to digest food properly like farm-raised chickens. This is where Padgett is like, listen, I know I hurt your brother's feeling. Please get him to go to prom. I don't remember. I have a really important favor to ask. Tell me why in the hell I should help you. I feel like Isabella's makeup artist had just started a new type of diet pill on the day they shot this scene because they were using a way heavier hand on this whole beat she's got. Maybe the actor herself was like, can you please give me makeup that I can leave on for my cousin's bat mitzvah this afternoon? So apparently Paget convinces Bryn to go talk to her because she's like, I know you've lost more than me, but I would do anything to get your brother back. It's the only thing I care about, even though I lost my college fund, even though I lost my friends, I lost my followers. So Bryn shows up. What's in the bag? Formal wear, or the closest thing I could find to it in your closet. Dude, it's a disaster in there. Why are there so many Skittles on the floor? Because I spilled some Skittles. <laughs> ha ha ha, that's so funny, I can't even. Now tell me why this girl grabbed that bottle of Garnier Micellar water and toned down her makeup in the Uber on the ride to this barn. You think I don't notice makeup incontinuity? That's the only thing I'm gonna notice when I'm watching a movie with nothing else going on but a bunch of bland ass people talking with their mouths. I miss the way you used to be, you know, before, before mom. Look, ever since you've been with Paget, okay, you've been back. Just checking, we're talking about a relationship that's lasted three and a half days, right? I'm in no way, you know, a therapist or a doctor or a medical expert, but I am diagnosing this girl with that party girl attachment disorder that I saw in an episode of Law & Order SVU. Also, shout out to Isabella. She brings the acting in this scene. She's a very good actress. What else was she in that I'm remembering? Oh, she played young Joy in the movie Joy. So she's playing a young Jennifer Lawrence. She's on the TV show, Jesse. Lots of TV. She's a pro. But now that Paget has been convinced to go to the dance. There's somehow a dance team presentation that has now become a dance off. I don't know how or why they would need to have a dance competition in the middle of the prom, especially when one of those crews just formed yesterday. But I also feel like I just heard the vocalist say that he was looking constipated, so I'm kind of stuck on that. I would have been on the phone with my agent by the first dance rehearsal, like, you need to have it added to my contract that they show the other girl on screen when they come to the constipated part of the song. Oh, I hate this prom thing. Just end already. If, you, if they had done any dancing in the movie before this, it wouldn't feel so random or out of place. But they didn't, so it does. <laughs> The other kids are like, woo, this prom sucks. We paid $50 a ticket for them to roll out some smart boards with jellyfish screensavers so we could watch some other people dance. Great. Finally, it's time to announce the prom king and queen. Look, I know this means a lot to some of you, so let's get through it so we can be done. That's me suffering through this movie because so many people on Twitter asked me to. Also, as you see, that's Matthew Lillard. He was in the original, he's all that, she's all that. He only appears in this one scene, although they have his voiceover on the intercom throughout the movie in order to make it seem like he played a bigger part, but he doesn't. After making sure that Nisha and Quinn are both streaming when she goes on stage and wins prom queen, which she somehow knew she was gonna win, what happened to Alden running against her? Like that was never even a close call. Why didn't that become a conflict? Doesn't matter. So this is all streaming live when Paget goes on stage to take her speech. This is me and this is me too, but I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. It's all fake. She's like, I know you guys all think that I just have a conventionally attractive face, athletic body, and perfect features. But in reality, I have to get hair extensions put in, and that's like really pricey at the salon that I go to. Thank you for my bravery, good night. Apparently this whole movie was about, you know, being yourself and not being fake on social media, even though like despite her putting on makeup before going live, which doesn't seem that weird, and despite her lying about where she lives, I didn't get enough evidence of her like 
truly faking parts of her personality. Like, could she have had some nerdy interest that she was afraid to let people know about online? Like, maybe she was really an amazing pianist uh, as well as dancer, but you know, the piano didn't sell tickets or whatever. Either way, shut up me, whatever. Someone special once told me, high school's just a bunch of scared people pretending to be something they're not. But it doesn't have to be that way. Oh no, is she about to pitch us her religion? Quick, unplug her PowerPoint. This is a public school. I would be so annoyed if someone stood up there and said, high school is a bunch of scared <laughs> pretending they know who they are when they <laughs> don't. I would be like, maybe you are <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I mean, that is probably true about high schoolers, but high schoolers themselves don't realize it. That's sort of the point. So after that big moving speech, <laughs> she relinquishes her crown and it goes to that character, Celeste, who we met once and she punches Jordan in the face for some reason. So satisfying, really happy for her. When she's leaving the prom, Cameron texts her and is like, I loved your speech. And he rides up on horseback. I don't know how he saw it, like, cause he's like, my phone's a piece of crap, remember? So was he watching from miles away on a horse? Anyway, they finally make up right as Jessica is about to call her. Seriously? <laughs> I'm done with her. Thank you. <laughs> now where were we? <laughs> now where were we? Really bringing it home with the emotional ending here on the last scene. Okay. Also, you're suddenly done with your Kardashian cameo friend. Like you don't need that sponsorship anymore. I'm pretty sure that losing your virginity before graduation doesn't come with a college scholarship. So you should probably familiarize yourself with FAFSA real quick, baby girl. They kissed, Matthew Lillard's dancing, everyone's happy. And this is where we find out what happens to Addison with the rest of her social media career. I just wanna say thank you to all my followers who came back to me who are so supportive of my new direction. Cameron has promised to help me post photos every day along the way. Ew, I'll probably still follow you then just because I kind of want to see how you act when he breaks up with you right before college. What's that gonna do to you? Also, what's with the unresolved plot points? Is Cameron going to college? Is he doing his gap life that he said? Did he find motivation to become a, a pro or to go pro with his career? Nothing, no development there. Cameron stays the same character and then Addison stays the same character too, love it. But at least we finally get to understand what at the very last second, what the bet actually was. All right, Alden, never say I'm someone who watches on a bet. First of all, who the f were you talking to just now? You really wanna break the fourth wall for the first time on the last line of dialogue? God, watching this movie end is like watching Cameron's horse die of exhaustion in a field somewhere while he's traveling Amsterdam. As you see, the bet is finally revealed to be that the loser has to get a tattoo of the word loser on their arm, which is why they're branded loser for life, which seems both oddly specific and juvenile to be the bet that they had been talking about forever, and if you, in any way thought that that was a satisfying or worthwhile payoff, then you have the blood of Cameron's dead horse on your hands. And I have it on my tits in two big bloody handprints. And for our art installation, we go into the subway and yell at people. Now that's cinematic, mama. Give me that on Netflix with subtitles in every language. Mm. Oh my goodness, we're done. That's all they wrote for sh he's all that. He was not all that, he was all bad. I'm gonna lose my mind if Netflix tries to copyright claim this video because I suffered to get this one out. I'm excited to go back to a Disney Channel movie that gives me at least a little bit of happy feelings and not this one that gave me like streptococcal bacteria in my throat. What did you guys think of this one? Some of you tweeted me saying that you think they cracked the perfect formula to a teen movie and I'm like, no. I, I feel that they didn't give us enough on-screen action. There was a lot of describing things that we didn't see and the characters were two dimensional. But hey, agree to disagree, I guess. Let me know what other movies I should cover on another episode of Clip Breakdown. Give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see more like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on notifications and you'll only be the others you know when I'm coming at you with a bet that we've been talking about forever. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you for surviving this plane crash with me. I will see you next time.